Today is Tuesday, September 4th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland Company. Today's guests are Steve Freed, Vice President of Grain Research at ADMIS, and Alan Bush, ADM Investor Services Senior Financial Economist. Steve, let's start with the grains this morning. Wheat prices are down this morning after a bounce late last week. Why are prices down today? Last week we had heard that there was going to be a, a meeting in Russia with the ministers and the exporters to talk about export limits. Uh, they had the meeting, they came out and they said we're not going to have any limits. So all the prices that we put in anticipation of that, we're taking it out. The, the problem is this could be a good buying opportunity for end users because eventually Russia is expected to run out of wheat for export before their next harvest. Corn prices also bounced higher on Friday. Why is this? And it's noteworthy that the December open interest is over one million contracts for the first time ever. Can you comment on what this might mean for the corn market? Well, the corn market is dealing with two major factors, opposing factors. Number one is you're going to have a harvest of a record crop. Number two, you're also going to have record demand. And so I think it's a combination of a record crop, record demand, and there's a big play in the options to figure out which way this market's going to go. And it probably is going to go higher. And so you've got all these things that suggest that for the first time ever we've got a million contracts open in the December contract. Turning to the beans, Steve, much of the news is bearish with the ongoing trade war with China, but prices are trying to stabilize. What's your read on the soybean market? It's interesting that Argentina's government is a mess. Uh, they're broke and the IMF says they have to increase revenue and reduce costs in order to get bridge loans to help their government. So over the weekend, they announced that they were going to put tariffs on and export taxes on corn and wheat, which they never had before, and increase export taxes on soybeans, soybean meal, and soybean oil. So number one, that could make them less competitive in the export market. But number two, we'll have to see what the farmers want to do in, in planting crops in which they're going to get less money for. Looking at the weather, Steve, the U.S. Midwest has seen above normal mm -hmm. rains the past seven days and the seven-day forecast calls for even more rain. Is this hurting the crop, perhaps delaying maturity? And what is the effect for basis? I think it, it's, it could delay the crop. Um, so far in the south, what we're hearing is the soybean yields are better than expected, and corn yields are a little less. So I think that it's not going to really change the overall picture. But right now, we've seen like Central Illinois corn basis rally 15 cents from Friday in fear, number one, that the crop may be delayed in harvest, but more importantly, that the farmer may not sell at these prices. Finally, Steve, any thoughts about the next USDA report due out on September 12th? All of the indications are that the corn crop's a little smaller and the bean crop could be much bigger. So if you just trade that thing, you would actually think the USDA, after the numbers come out, corn might rally a little bit and beans might drop a little bit. Now let's jump into the interest rate futures. What's the current outlook for this market? Well, it still looks lower. Uh, we do have what appears to be the Fed raising rates two more times this year, one, one time in uh, uh, later this month uh, on the 26th and most likely another time in December. And there's probably going to be two rate hikes in 2019. So the trend is still lower. I think it's not going to be a straight down move, more of an erosion but the lower prices still seem to be in store for the futures. However, today, the bonds are about a full point lower, very much underperforming the news, which would suggest that the uh, very near-term uh, trend is lower. For futures to under underperform as badly as they are today, that suggests follow-through weakness for the next couple of days. Uh, copper, why has copper been so weak lately? And can we look for a bottom in this market? I think it's more of a timing factor, not so much price that we, we would be looking at, but more uh, in regard to time. So as long as the U.S.-China trade issues remain and are apparently not likely to be, be resolved anytime soon, I would expect lower prices for copper. In fact, all of the base metals, I, I think, are likely to come under pressure. But as soon as it appears that the, there is some type of trade agreement in the works, that is likely to be the, the timing for a bottom. And in fact, that should be the a bottom for all of the base metals and probably all the precious metals as well. Is China still the major factor for base metals, industrial metals in general? Absolutely, it is. 
Uh, the dollar, to some degree, also a factor, but they're very much combined. But it's it's the the trade situation that is the dominant influence undermining the metals. Finally, Alan, looking at the stock index futures, the Russell 2000 futures advanced to new record highs today. The S&P 500 and NASDAQ futures reached historical highs last week. What is the outlook for the stock indexes? Will we continue to climb? I think that uh, we will see higher prices. Now, in the indices are lower today. Uh, the trade situation is uh, a factor adversely affecting stock index futures, uh, at least in today's trade, uh, since the uh, uh, morning hours. However, I would not be surprised to see a move back to higher on the day in the S&P. It was quite a bit lower uh, earlier today. Coming back though, so nothing has changed longer term. It still appears that the U.S. stock index futures are likely to advance. And it also seems that U.S. equity markets are very much overperforming what we're seeing elsewhere, especially in China. So of course, uh, the consensus view is nobody wins a trade war, but the U.S. appears to be holding up much better than uh, what is, is happening in China. So the, uh, the short answer is yes, stock index futures are still very much likely to, to advance. Thank you both. Remember, the views and opinions expressed here today in this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland Company. If you'd like more information about our brokerage services, would like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.